Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In today's video, we're going to look at lead code problem and the problem's name is contiguous array. So in this question, we're given a binary array called nums and the task is to return the maximum length of a contiguous subarray which has equal number of zeros and ones in it. So in this case, as you can see, there is a subarray of two elements which has one zero and one one. And this is a subarray which has equal number of uh, zeros and ones. There is one zero and there is one one. And the length of this subarray is two, which is the maximum. and 2 is the output. In this case also this is a probable answer and also this is a probable answer which has equal number of zeros and ones. Both of them have the same length of 2 so 2 will be the max length. So I've taken an example here. So the brute force approach to solve this question is that we find all the subarrays. We take one pointer here and we take another pointer here and this j pointer will keep on moving forward. So first it will go here, then it will go here, it will go here, it will go here, it will go here, it will go here and when j was here this will be the maximum subarray which has equal number of zeros and ones. So if j was here, the length would be j minus i plus 1 which is equal to 5 minus 0 plus 1 which is equal to 6. So 6 will be the answer for this example. And that is not the only case. You have to move the i pointer in the next iteration. So i will start from here and j will start from here. And j pointer will keep moving forward again and it will keep on uh, uh, calculating the max length. So this is a two pointer approach where the time complexity is big O of n square where n is the length of the input array nums given to us. But this O of n square is brute force and it will fail for longer subarrays. So you have to find a solution which takes big O of n time complexity. So let's see how we can do that. So again this question boils down to finding the prefix sum. Let's calculate the prefix sum for every index. So these are the prefix sum values. And here you are not knowing which subarray has the maximum uh, prefix sum. So what you can do is that you can convert the zeros wherever they are present into minus ones. These will be minus ones, right? So let me substitute them. Now let's calculate the prefix sums. This will be one and this will be zero. This will be minus one. This will be zero. This will be minus one. This will be zero. And this will be one. And here you can see that since this is a binary array, it will either contain zeros and ones. And this zero we have converted into minus one. So the original binary array is a combination of one and minus one. And when you add them both, you get a combination of zero. So wherever there is a zero, it has equal number of zeros and ones. So you can notice that this has a zero and one, which you can notice here. And again, here there is a zero. So this subarray also has a equal number of zeros and ones. So that subarray you can notice here. Again, there's a zero here. So you get a bigger subarray, which has zeros and ones. So that subarray also you can find here. And out of all this, this yellow subarray has the maximum length of 6. So 6 will be the output which was matching our brute force answer. So this will be our first case that convert all the zeros into minus ones in the input array and find the longest possible uh, subarray which has sum equal to 0. So here you might notice that. So what will be the starting index? So prefix sum is initially 0, right? And what is that index where it is 0 at? It is 0 at minus 1th index. And you're finding the distance between two zeros. So this is a subarray. And again, you're finding a subarray distance between this and this zero. So this will also be a subarray. And finally, again, you're finding a subarray between the distance between this zero and this zero. So this is again a subarray. So we need to store this prefix sum value somewhere, right? So that we can compare it with the previous zero. So we have to create a hash map. So I create a hash map here. So first the prefix sum is zero, right? So add that value zero and where is that? Uh, index where prefix sum is present, it is present at minus 1. So this key is going to store the prefix sum and this value is going to store the index where the prefix sum was occurred. And now we start with the first index and now we are at this index. So calculate the sum. So initially sum was 0 and now we add this value into sum. So sum is equal to 1. And we also have to return a variable answer. So keep track of max length which is initially 0. So sum is 1. Check if the sum is present inside the map. No. So add 1 and where is that index occurring? It is at index 0. Now go to the next element. The next element we are at index 1 and the value is minus 1. Add this value into sum and sum becomes 0. Check if the 0 is present inside the map. Yes, it is present. Where is it present? It is present at minus 1. So calculate the distance. So this is i. i is equal to 1 now and max length will be the maximum length until now 0 or the distance. Where is the distance? It is i minus this value. This value is minus 1. Map dot get of this sum value wherever is that present. So i is now equal to 1 and map dot get of sum, sum is 0 and so this is this value which is minus 1. 
which is 2. Check if this 2 or this 0, whichever is max. So max of 0, 2 is equal to 2. So max length will be updated by 2. So it means we have found this pair. Now go to the next element i is equal to 2. Now add this value into the sum. So the sum is now minus 1. Check if minus 1 is present inside the map. No. So add it and set its uh, value to 2. Now go to the next element. So next element i is equal to 3. Add that value 1 into the sum. So sum becomes 0. Check if 0 is present inside the map. Yes, it is present. Where is it present? It is present at minus 1. So calculate the current distance. So current distance is this. So i is equal to 3. 3 minus map dot get of sum which is equal to this value minus 1. So 3 minus minus 1 is equal to 3 plus 1 which is equal to 4. Check if this 4 is max or 2 is max. 4 is max. So update max length with 4. So we found this pair. So we found this sub array. Now go to the next element. Next element i is equal to 4. So add that value into sum. So sum is equal to minus 1. So the sum is no, minus 1 now. Check if minus 1 is present inside the map. Yes, it is present. So get its value. Its value is 2. So calculate the current sum. So i is equal to 4. 4 minus this value 2 so which is 2 check if 2 is max or 4 is max 4 is max so 4 will remain the same now move forward now i is equal to 5 so add this value the sum becomes 0 check if 0 is present inside the map yes it is present where is it present it is present at minus 1 so calculate the current distance i is equal to 5 5 minus and the value is minus 1 so 5 minus minus 1 is 5 plus 1 is equal to 6 check if the 6 is greater or this 4 is greater 6 is greater so update max length with 6. Now move further. Now i is equal to 6. Add this value into sum. So sum is now 1. Check if 1 is present inside the map. Yes, it is present. Where is it present? It is present at 0th index. So the prefix sum of 1 occurred first at 0th index. So calculate the distance. So current i is equal to 6 and map.get of 0. So 6 minus 0 is equal to 6. Check if 6 is greater or 6 is greater. Both are same. So 6 will remain the same. And go to the next element. In the next element, i is equal to 7, which is out of bounds, so we end the iteration. And whatever is present inside this max length value will be returned as the output. So 6 will be output for this question. So now let's take a look at the code. First, we have to convert zeros into minus 1, which will, and again, you have to calculate this hash map value and get and calculate max length, which will again take O of n. So the overall time complexity will remain as O of n. But instead of doing this two pass approach, so I'll show you this during code and let's see how we can op optimize this into directly O of n. You don't need to convert first all the zeros into minus 1. But inside the original array, whenever you find 0, you do sum minus minus. So that directly you get the value minus 1 added into this sum. So let's take a look at the code and do these optimizations. So coming to the function given to us, this is the function name. This is the input array nums and we have to return an integer. Like I said, we need a hash map to store the prefix sum value as the key and the index where it, that prefix sum value is occurring as its value. So this hash map is going to take two integer values as key and value. I'm going to name it map. And like I said, initially the prefix sum is zero, right? And the prefix sum zero is present at index minus one. So add it into the map. So map dot put and the prefix sum value is zero. And where was it first occurring? It is occurring at minus one index position. And now I need to keep track of the current sum. So I keep track of a variable sum and I create a variable max length, which will be our output. So I create a variable max length, which is also zero. So now here we need to iterate through the input array. So I use a for loop i, where I will iterate from zeroth index until the end of the array nums.length. And now if the current value nums of i is equal to a zero, we need to change that nums of i value into minus one. So nums of i will be minus one now. And now we modified the input array by changing all the zeros to minus ones. And now we have to iterate through the modified array from the starting index until the end. And now we keep updating our sum by adding whatever is present at nums of i. And each iteration, this sum will keep on updating. Now we check if this prefix sum is already present inside the map. So if map dot contains key, because uh, prefix sum is stored as key, as the sum. So if this prefix sum is already present inside the map, we keep updating our max length variable, which we declared here. So max length, we are using math dot max by comparing the current max length. And now we have to find the current distance, which is equal to the current index i minus the value where prefix sum was previously occurring. So map dot get of this prefix sum sum. So this will give us the index where the prefix sum was previously occurring. And this is the current index. So the difference between them will give you the sub length. And you keep updating 
max length by comparing it with the current length. And in the else block, it means this prefix sum has not been present inside the map. So we haven't seen it before. So simply enter the prefix sum as key and set its current index i as its value. And finally, after all the iterations, we have our updated max length. So whatever is present inside this will be returned as the output. So return max length. Now let's try to run the code. The test case are being satisfied. Let's submit the code. And our solution is accepted. But here we are first modifying the input array. So if you don't want to modify the input array, it means you don't have to convert all the zeros into minus ones. So here you're updating the zero into minus one, right? So what if we can do this inside? So I place this check inside this for loop. So if the current value is minus one, so simply instead of updating and then adding that value into sum, so simply here you can do sum minus minus. And in the else block, it means it is not a zero, it is a one. So here in the else block, it will be sum plus plus. And now you can remove this and you can do this in one pass. So instead of two passes, you can do it in a single pass. So here, if we see if the input array has a zero, we subtract that value instead of changing this value into minus one and then updating the sum. And in the else block, it means the current value is not a zero. It means it is a one. Then add that one into the sum by doing plus plus and the rest of the code is same. Now let's try to run the code. The test case are being accepted. Let's submit the code and a solution is accepted. So the time complexity of this approach is big O of n and the space complexity is also big O of n because we're using a hash map to solve this question where n is the length of the input array nums given to us. That's it guys. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.